I'm ready. What about, how do I start this again? Uh, hi, Byron Lazine, Nicole White, and you're tuned into episode. No, you're tuned into episode. 89. Yeah. Right. Is it 89? Uh, no, Should we do something for 90? Yes. Okay. All right. You're tuned into episode. No, that's no. not how I start it. No. Why do I not know how to start it right now? This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned in to episode 88 of The Real Word. Word is up. Word is up. I just, up. everyone just always turns to me. Sam turns to I'm me waiting for, I'm to trying to see if she remembers the line. Of course I remember. I remember my lines better than you remember yours. I know. We only have two lines. Me? The whole show. This show, yes. The rest of it's opinion. So if you're new to the show, these are our opinions of what's happening in our real estate industry. I think Mm -hmm. it's important for us to protect our industry and to know what is going on. That's why we do the show. Right, Nicole? Right. Did you second that? Second it. All right. Look at that. It's like a little meeting. Oh yeah. It's like a, it's like a town council meeting. That's right. You second that motion. All right. Racket number one. We're going to do two rackets and then our marketeer of the week. The Mm -hmm. first racket is a Brad Inman article. I like kind of like we bumped it back. We usually record on Mondays. Today's Tuesday as we record this. Well, yeah, Brad, I, f- I feel like there's like a different tone to you mm, on today on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, you're you're kind of like you're kind of more like bedroom voice. Bedroom voice. Jeez, wow. <laughs> I didn't know I had. A, I don't usually don't have much to say in the bedroom. You know, I don't, I don't do much talking there. All right. Uh, but this was today at six thirty-seven a.m. Yeah, right? right. So we got all, we got all the new news because we're on Tuesday the instead of Monday. New news in sickness and in health. The Rocky Marriage of Wall Street and Real Estate. Mm-hmm. So uh, you want to give Brad's analogy here? Um, well, I'm not there. You want me to? Hmm. I wish you had. You read it. Well, I read it, but I could. I'll probably slaughter it. Hmm. Well, Brad's not too keen on the relationship of real estate and Wall Street working out long term. He cites some examples. I have it here. Main Street and Wall Street are like two old high school lovers who have. Mm, raucous. Is that what it is? I think so. It's something like that. Right. Wait, get, get. Come on. Vanessa's on the phone. Yeah, she's on Ro- mute though. Ro- well, unmute her. Raucous. Raucous. Raucious. Yeah, something like Racious, that. Gracious, raucious affair. 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 At their class reunion every few years. The comparison ends there. Intimate classmates rarely face dire consequences because it sounds like we constantly are facing consequences once real estate gets in bed with Wall Street. And, and so Brad goes on to explain the consequences that real estate has seen when partnering with real estate. The last subprime mortgage crisis, obviously, or the, the one that comes to mind. The being, one. In 07, um, talks about Realogy quite a bit here, talking about how much debt they have right Mm now, $3.6 billion in debt. But this is all from past credit card expenses, if you will. Uh, He references in 2007 when they were bought for $7 billion when they had $6 billion in debt, so their debt's gone down. Mm -hmm. And then 2012, they went public, public, but the debt did not go away, and management has struggled uh, being able to innovate and attract new agents with uh, the lack of innovation, right? Right. And so he kind of goes through that whole thing. Where I kind of got a little lost, Brad, is he talked about Zillow for sure, but he grouped Rich Barton in with Gary Keller, mm-hmm. with uh, Robert Refkin, with Remax. By grouping them in, he's basically saying, oh, he's not, I mean, he's not saying that he's not uh, Wall Street backed because clearly Zillow's Wall Street backed. But yeah. He, he's more talking about their ability to innovate even uh, despite the fact that all their innovation is holding back the stock price to some degree because investors are nervous about where they're going. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the article I did, I will agree, d- kind of does go back and forth because it talks about the success of Remax, but they're now publicly traded. But when it wasn't, there was tons of antics going right. on. Um, but then again, he does back up the fact that Zillow will do fine and will continue to do fine in this market. Um, and then obviously Keller Williams is still privately owned. So it was sort of, he was, it was all, I, I, I'm, I'm here to support I mean, you. G- 
Gary Keller has shown the ability to move when he needs to move. If you follow the show, I obviously have. Because well, he's able to. Yeah, he's able yeah. to. And I have an admiration for him uh, doing just that, right? Seeing trends in the market, seeing around corners, and, and the investments he's making right now in AI are the investment or the level of investments that accompany to Brad's point um, that real G brands can't do right now because they are fighting this uphill battle to pay down debt, to get the stock, to get out of the basement, right? And get back up um, where most of their investors bought it, which is well above uh, where they're currently being traded. And so to me, this is more about that. Can you innovate? Can you build a brand today in 2019 going into 2020 that's going to actually attract agents without going into further debt C compass, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Realogy just can't do it. We talked about it last week. Well, that's because they also, I mean, really have sort of like it's stating in the article, like this anchor that that's constantly sort of over their head. Um, like it's like that, like gray cloud that they're, you know, they're carrying this debt with them, which also doesn't really allow them. I think also because they're now public since the, the crisis, um, I think there's a lot more red tape though, too. You can only do so many things being a publicly traded company. Right. So. And so here, the, go to the end of this article. It, we're going to link it up. It's an Inman article. Obviously Brad wrote it. Um, and the last three lines are, are really interesting to me. Real estate has always been an industry of individual achievement, whether it be top producing agents or characters like uh, Keller, Leninger, Barton, or Refkin today. Uh, now Wall Street is again fully invested in real estate, providing bonanza funding it. for the, the audacious word. eye buying experiment. I would argue it's not an experiment, but uh, billions are once again flooding Main Street. Watch this uh, closely. Consequences are inevitable. Holla. I think for Real G, consequences could be, will be inevitable. It's inevitable right now because of uh, the, the fact that they're losing some of their top teams and they're not attracting top talent like Compass or some or, or Keller Williams still is today. Um, what I don't think is going to be an inevitable, inevitable consequence you yourself. is Zillow, right? I don't think you can lump them into that category because what have they done? And I'll continue to say it better than anybody in real estate in the last 15 years. They've built the brand. Well, they built the brand before they built the real estate company. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about sort of apples and oranges a little bit. I mean, I know that Zillow is obviously very much getting into like the real estate company business. You, you nailed it. It's just, it It just, it went the, a different way. They built the brand before they built the real estate company. And they, and so people think they're crazy with all this change they're doing right now, <clears throat> but they're backing into all the things that they know they can and will do because they've got that brand awareness. That's well, right. Cause I mean, the biggest thing there is that, I mean, I have even buyers now like, Oh, let me hop on Zillow. I want to see that house. I just saw a for sale right in front. So it's still very much the consumer that right. An information based site, not, you know, an insurance or a, a real estate, like yeah. company per se. So very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Racket number two. It would be fun to have Brad on one of our, maybe we can have like, that would be very, you know, all those people that like do like the headsets and there's like three screens. Yeah. I like doing that. You do? Yeah. I feel like it's a little distracting, but we should do that one time. I'd participate With in Brad. that event. Sure. Yeah. Mm. I agree. That'd be fun. Brad, shout out to you. We let's, could be, let's you get and you I on could the be in different locations too, so that there's, you know. Mm, yeah. Because then the, doesn't the screen move depending we'll on who's talking? Do in the winter talking. when I'm in Florida. Well, that's not fun, but yes. Hmm. Not fun now. <laughs> All right, racket number two. Homeowners can charge game day rents to sports fans. What do you think about this? We just we just ended uh, week one of the hundredth NFL season. Yes. College uh, game day is a huge sport in this country. Obviously, football is back. People are loving it. Love it. What, what do you think about this almost Airbnb play? Well, I mean, I, I think I think it's probably, and I'm confident that it's been going on forever. So when I was down at Texas A&M, I, I actually didn't realize how 
college. Yeah, you were just in College yes, Station. Yes, College Station. And it, I had no idea the like, co- co- I didn't realize that college football was so large. Again, we're up here in Connecticut. UConn yeah. is like, meh, you know, I mean, they have a stadium. That's, North, Northeast college football in general is meh. It, it, yeah. it is meh. Um, I mean, these, there, it, it is, from what I understand, because I was never there for a game, but I have been to their field. Um, I mean, their entire lives center around A&M down there, but for probably almost three miles around their stadium, there are tailgates for these events. I mean, there's homes that we would... I was hooked up with a few builders down there and even some of their communities that they're building miles away from the stadium, they know that there's going to be A&M alum buying these homes just to use for games. So they don't even live in Texas, but lots of people come back for the games. There are tons of people that have season tickets and they are just buying these homes just to be there for the game. So none of this surprises me. I'm certain that this has probably been going on much longer than, you know, we're actually recognizing. It's just the prices are crazy. I have a friend in Naples, Florida. Yeah. He went and bought a house in South Bend. Yeah. Uh, oh, I Dame. think that's on this. It's the number one list. Yeah. It's number one. And yeah. this is, so here's the list. The top seven places with the highest rents on game days, yeah. according to the uh, analysis, were number one, South Bend. So Notre Dame, 817 a night on game days, which is why they I'm would curious go up. what that is though. Is that like a one bedroom apartment or is that like That's a house? True. It doesn't get like into you get that. a house, you know, I mean, families are going no. to these games. This you're, isn't just like you're going out and like tailgating with your friend. You, I don't think you're getting a house for that unless it's very small. Because, I doubt it. Because my friend who I'm talking about, they were renting houses cause mm-hmm. he's a season ticket holder. Yeah. So they were doing that every single season. And then he started doing the math. He's like, Houses in South Bend aren't that expensive. Right. I'm just going to go buy or not expensive and compare it. Right. Right. I'm just going to go buy one and use it. Yeah. And so, but they're really only going to be using it. You know, there's probably five home games or something a year. <laughs> about five. I mean, but we're, but again, and that's like, that's what's so different about sort of the North and the South. I mean, it is just like, it is, a, a and I don't want to use the word cult because that just has like a negative, but like it is well, such. Well, Indiana's not the South. It is such a lifestyle. Yeah. Like so, it is. Notre Dame amazing. football is crazy. I've got a bunch of friends that are Notre Dame fans. Uh, I am not, so I love to see them lose, even though I don't even have a college team. I just like to root against everybody's college teams because I'm only an NFL fan, and I massively disrespect the, the college fans and their oh love for it, that I've root against do all I, of their can teams. I, can I give you, can I, can I, do I have permission to? No, you have no permission on this show, okay? <laughs> not on this show. Um, yeah, number two is Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, then you've got University of Alabama makes a lot of sense. They've been crushing it. Penn, uh, Penn State is number four. Mm. Uh, they're still in there despite the Joe Pa debacle, right? Yeah. Auburn, number five. Uh, Virginia. People hate it. Every time Penn State comes up that are big Penn State fans, I always bring up Joe Pa. Like, yeah, what about Joe Pa and the, the other guy, you know, the, the molester? I you always just, need to just make that statement you just like to stir. around Penn you State. You like to salt and stir. Hate Penn State. Salt and stir. I, no, I hate the NCAA. I'm fully supportive of LeBron James. If you saw it in the news last week, he's trying to push uh, legislators in California to push a bill that would allow these college athletes to get paid for their brand, right? Because they're building this incredible brand, which brings right. people into these games yeah. and just pumps money through these universities and, the schools and the NCAA are and they're the tons ones tons of money and, these, of and they're telling these kids no you can't even go out and sign autographs or you can't it's even absurd. accept like Nike shoes it is so yeah. stupid the NCAA this is why I won't have a college football team and we're totally going way yeah, off we're gonna topic lo- we're here gonna, we're gonna we're gonna we may lose we may lose some followers I, here. I hate you NCAA period end of story okay. you guys are a total that's a total racket okay. talk about a racket NCAA huge racket Awesome. All right. Virginia Tech is six. <laughs> <laughs> and then University of Mississippi is seven. All right. We'll link this up. This is a realtor mag. Um, but I'd love to hear again, people that are living in cities again. I mean, I didn't even realize that college. I mean, I knew the college football, but like being immersed into, I didn't have any idea how big it was. I'd love to hear what you guys are getting for rents or what you're doing. We're big fans of the experience. So oh, say you yeah. take... Just a four. Well, bed. trust me, I will be going to an A and M game. After You're going, in. Oh, I have to. Yeah. I mean, well, think about this, like, cause, cause we're so big on Airbnb, VRBO experiences. What if you took a three bedroom, four bedroom house? you know, decked it out, like, because you're not worried if you're just looking for game day rents, you're not right. worried about, 
you know, painting it. What's your favorite gray color? What right. Do you like? What is it? I, well, I, I like a few of them. You like a few of them? Yeah, don't they call don't me out on mind. any. Don't they call, do. I mean, like, okay. I like harbor gray. Harbor like, gray. There you go. Yeah. Instead of going harbor freaking gray, you just, like, paint the A&M colors all over the walls, but you have, like, built-in grills, maybe a little, you know, uh, a little um, field goal net in the back where people can do activities, like, all of the tailgating Would you set participate up. in that? This is just what people like. Okay. You know, this is what people like to do. Yeah, that's what you like On their like college do. game day. Yeah. Given more money to the NCAA. It's actually, so um, very contradictory to that, though. There are some hotels um, down there, though, that are, um, that they're, they are beautiful, but not ho- hokey kind of like that. But they're, you would actually enjoy the experience. I ha- I, I'm going to have to drag you down there. Mm. It's, 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 yeah. it's quite magnificent. But anyway. All right. Our marketeer of the week goes to Tim Smith over there in Newport, California. We covered it on a previous while back. real world a while back when he released uh, the video, Teach Me How to Duffy. If you haven't seen this video yet, we'll link it up or Have Google to. it. You can just, I'm sure you've seen it. If you're in the real estate business yeah, and you you've haven't had to seen, have seen it, this by now. shame on you. But here's why he's the marketeer of the week because not only was it the video of the year in real estate, he sold the house. And not only did he sell the house, Nicole, he set a Newport Harbor record. So now what a story Tim has to tell right. to prospective sellers. Like, hey, yeah, that video mm-hmm. that got all that attention. That They're that, all going to demand a, another. Teach like, me how to Duffy. Well, this uh, was they're a. They're going to demand another video. This was a $35 million house. So he's going to say, yeah, you got a $35 million property. Let's yeah. roll. Right. So that, that's. Congratulations. A, um, that's amazing. That shattered the record in Newport Harbor. So clearly the video got a ton of attention. He listed it for 44 Point nine million, so they they only carved ten milli off the I list mean, price. I mean, it's big like deal, right? One weekend. Um, it's the highest price home ever in Newport Harbor. So, congrats to Tim. It's awesome. Uh, getting it done after for sure. What was Nicole's favorite video? Favorite of all video time. of all time. I thought it was really good. I thought it was fine. And I did want it. I do want a Duffy though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Those Duffy boats look. Yeah. They look fun. Yeah. Even I could have some fun on that. I would do that. Mm, you don't know how to have fun. Yeah. All right. If you guys know a marketeer of the week that we should be checking out and highlighting on this show, please send it in. Leave us a comment. Do all smash that. Smash it. Yeah, smash it all. Thank you guys. Bye. Keep it real.